Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. You know, as far back as I can remember programming, there were languages whose compilers created pure native code. I started with C, then Assembler, then C++ after that. But in the middle there, I got into Quick Basic, which was interpreted at runtime. Visual Basic was also interpreted, and the runtime environment did much of the same stuff that the modern .NET CLR does. Even back then, there were people who were angry because VB didn't create truly native apps, and the Delphi programmers were producing faster, smaller applications that also ran natively. Back then, every CPU cycle and every byte of memory mattered. The machines of the day weren't the behemoths we use today. Time is money, and while VB apps were faster to create, they were perceived as slow. Today, we have different reasons for wanting native applications that don't have runtime dependencies, that start up faster than their just-in-time compiled counterparts, and also take up less memory. Container apps come to mind. In this episode of the .NET Show, I'll give you a brief history of native compiling in .NET. We'll talk about the benefits and drawbacks of native compilation. And then we'll actually compare an app compiled with a new native ahead of time compiler for .NET and one compiled with Roslyn, the JIT compiler most of us have been using for years. Native AOT is coming right up on the .NET Show. I'm using .NET 7.0 Preview 3. I'm also using this, the X64 SDK for Windows. And I also installed, just for good measure, the hosting bundle. Now, when you install Visual Studio 2022 Preview or any Visual Studio that supports .NET 7, you want to make sure that this is checked off. Desktop development with C++. Yes, I know we're not using C++. But this has all the tools that you'll need to do native AOT compiling. This is the repository that I'm using, native-aot-test. And here I've also outlined all of the background things that you probably need to know about AOT in .NET 7. Native AOT is just the latest in a long line of tools that are used for generating native code in .NET. They can help you build faster and lighter applications by generating code at build time rather than runtime. Native AOT generates 100% native code at build time with no dependencies. But native compiling for .NET's been around since the beginning. NGen, for example, is the native image generator for the .NET framework. It's for Windows only. It's for the old framework, not for core. Now, ready to run, is sort of a hybrid between a native compiler and an IL compiler. It's actually not the compiler, it's the format. The compiler for ready to run is called CrossGen, a tool that provides ahead of time compilation for the code. So the need for jitting at runtime is reduced, but it is not completely eliminated. Now, Mono AOT is what is used for Xamarin Forms for iOS applications. So all this stuff has been around for a while, but now the native AOT project has come out of its shell and is going in to mainstream production. Now it's not complete yet, but as you'll see, it's pretty impressive. So let's talk about the benefits of AOT. Well, you can build self-contained apps that can be copied from system to system, as long as they are the same. In other words, if you compile it for Windows, you can copy the .exe file to another Windows machine and it will run without any .NET Framework requirements. The load time is faster. Now this is really great for container apps because you're in a container. You want it to be as fast as possible. You want it to load fast, you want it to die fast, and you also want it to use less memory. And that's the next benefit, a smaller memory footprint. Because only the code that's required is loaded, not the entire CLR. Now the executable size is higher. Yes, that's true. 
But if you look at memory being used, it's much less. Now, performance may or may not be sufficiently improved. It'll definitely be better. But how much? Well, that depends on a lot of things. Some of the drawbacks of AOT, no loading assemblies using reflection or using reflection emit for code generation. Obviously, you get what you get, no more. It also may require tweaking for supporting dependencies. Yeah, you may have some missing things and things that aren't the right version and whatever, and you may have to resolve those things. There's lots of documentation on that. Also, longer build times. If you got an old machine, go make a cup of coffee. So I'm going to create a console app, and the console app, make sure that it's not a .NET Framework console app. You want to be able to see Linux, Mac OS, Windows console. I'm going to call it Fibonacci. Because guess what? That's right. We're going to print out the Fibonacci sequence. Well, a little bit of it anyway. Make sure .NET 7 is selected as your framework. And let's just completely replace the code with what we want here. In mathematics, the Fibonacci numbers form a sequence, the Fibonacci sequence, in which each number is the sum of the two preceding ones. So the Fibonacci function fulfills this. You pass it the first number, the second number, the numbers processed, and the numbers in the sequence, and it calls itself after calculating the next number and showing it. Now the whole thing gets timed with a stopwatch, and we're also going through a number of executions. So we have the numbers in the sequence that we want to print, but we also can go several times. And we're going to use these two numbers to essentially make this thing work harder. So I'm starting with 45 numbers in the sequence with one execution. And let's just see how long it takes. Well, not very long, 62 milliseconds. Now, outputting the series into the console adds overhead, significant overhead, because of screen drawing. So let's comment out this line right here and now see how long it takes. Well, not even a millisecond. So now we can start bumping up these numbers. Let's go 10,000 times. All right, one millisecond. We're clearly going to have to go bigger than that. Well, how about 10,000 executions of 10,000 times? There we go. That's more like it. Let's try it in release mode. 298 milliseconds. So clearly release mode's doing something better. All right, so now I'm gonna add a new console application to the solution, and we're gonna enable AOT, and then copy this code exactly as it is, and compare the results. Now for this project, I need to go to NuGet to get a package from the .NET 7 preview NuGet feed. So I'll go to Tools, Options, search for NuGet. Here's Package Sources. And you can see I've already got one down here for the .NET 7 preview. The link to this is in the repository. Now I'm going to go to Fibonacci AOT, Manage NuGet Packages. I'm going to select the .NET 7 preview source. And I'm going to also make sure include pre-release is checked off. I'm going to go to Browse. And we're going to search for IL compiler. There it is. Microsoft .NET IL compiler. Provides a native AOT compiler and runtime for .NET. Good. Now, it's not enough that we just build this and run it. We're going to have to publish it. So I'm going to right click on the project and select publish and we're going to start a publish profile. I want to publish to a folder and a real folder, not a click once folder. And these defaults should be just fine. Hit close on the next screen. 
Now I'm going to click Show All Settings, and I'm going to change the target runtime from Portable to WinX X64. Now, also, if you look at File Publish Options, this is where you can enable Ready to Run compilation. Now, this is the current technology, not the new technology. And remember, Ready to Run does both native and IL, so we don't want that. We're not going to check it off. Now, before I publish, I'm just going to rebuild. I know I probably don't need to, but it's a habit, and I like it. Now I'm going to publish. Now, one thing to notice here when you're publishing is that you're using the IL compiler right there, not the Rosalind compiler. All right, so let's open the folder. And here's our AOT. Now, just for comparison, let's open this folder, the IL version, and go to bin, release, .NET 7. All right, here's our IL version, and here's our AOT version. IL version's 146K. AOT version is four megabytes. Hmm, that's a little counterintuitive, isn't it? All right, well, just for S's and G's, let's run this one again, 266 milliseconds, and our AOT version, 131 milliseconds. So the AOT version runs faster, that's for sure. Now, what about memory? Let's take a look. So the IL version is taking 11.7 megabytes, and the AOT version is taking 7.2 megabytes. So it only includes those parts of the CLR and the base class library that we're using, whereas the IL version got a whole bunch of files, all of its dependencies. So what about WPF and Windows Forms applications? What about MAUI applications? What about all of these apps that run .NET? Well, right now, we're limited to console apps and class libraries. But all that other stuff is coming later, for sure. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.